Hello, and welcome. Well, unless you've been living under a rock for the last two years, you know how difficult it's been to get a new graphics card at anywhere near the MSRP, or manufacturer-suggested retail price. So what's a gamer to do, then, if you're not willing to spend ridiculously inflated amounts of money on a new graphics card? Games aren't going to play themselves, right? Well, if you're a competitive Warzone player like me, you may not be as out of luck as you think. I've been fortunate enough to acquire a range of uh, NVIDIA graphics cards. Unfortunately, I don't own any AMD cards, so I haven't been able to test those. But uh, I've got NVIDIA cards ranging all the way back to the GTX 970, all the way forward to the RTX 3070, and even a bit of 3090 footage in there just to have something to compare everything to as a gold standard. Um, but yeah, so is it actually worth it to spend thousands of dollars to remain top tier competitive, or can you do so on something a little bit lower? Let's find out. Okay, so all testing for this video was done at 1080p with a Ryzen 9 5950X using Precision Boost Overdrive. I tried using a 4.7 GHz all-core overclock as well, but I actually found that the frame rates were a bit lower, so sticking with Precision Boost Overdrive. And lastly, we're running 32GB of DDR4-3200 RAM at C16. Seems to be a pretty common setup that a lot of people are running, so along with that. These first couple of tests are pretty straightforward since there's no DLSS available for these cards or anything like that. I don't really have anything else to compare them to. Um, even at the lowest possible settings, they're still uh, pretty much completely maxed out. So, uh, Starting it off with the Asus Strix GTX 970. Uh, I went with stock clocks on this one just because I wasn't familiar enough with overclocking the Maxwell architecture. Um, you can actually make your own uh, custom BIOSes with these ones and set your own power limits and stuff like that. So you could potentially get some more performance out of this, a little bit more so than usual even. Um, but it's just uh, more work than I was looking to put in right now because I have so many cards to test. I just didn't want to have to try and figure that out. So uh, this one's all at stock, but um, uh, looking at about 80 FPS on average for this one. Um, unfortunately, my Riva tuner is not showing me average FPS, so I just kind of have to eyeball it. If you have like a PS5 or an Xbox Series X and an HDMI 2.1 monitor with at least 120 Hz, uh, refresh rate, you're probably better off sticking with that for this particular card. Um, I mean, it is still on PC, so you do still get access to the FOV slider that you don't have on consoles. Uh, so there is that. Next up, we have the MSI Ventus XS GTX 1650 Super. And I've got a plus 75 megahertz core offset and plus 600 megahertz on the memory. And it's still got everything on the lowest settings here because it's still pretty uh, heavily GPU bound and there's no DLSS options for this card either. Uh, but we do have about 105 FPS on average for this one. Uh, so quite a bit faster than the 970 and at a much lower power consumption as well. But it's kind of interesting to see how the efficiency improves over the years as well. Um, but yeah, it's probably still uh, an overall better experience on PS5 and Xbox Series X, assuming you have the appropriate display to pair it with in the HDMI 2.1 connection, unless of course you really like the uh, FOV slider that you get on PC. Next up, we've got the Gigabyte RTX 2060 OC. So now we're starting to get to the point where you can actually get frame rates quite a bit higher than what the consoles can get and uh, there's also DLSS available to help out with that as well. Uh, so for this one I've put a plus 90 megahertz offset on the core and plus 100 megahertz on the memory. And on the top left we've got DLSS off and all settings on their lowest values and we're getting around 125 FPS average on that one. In the top right, uh, DLSS is also off, but I've used uh, my optimized settings, which would be like a mix of high and low settings, just using some higher settings where it actually makes a noticeable difference for visual quality. And with that one, you get around 105 FPS. In the bottom left, same optimized settings, DLSS quality, up to around 120 FPS. And on the bottom right, uh, same optimized settings with DLSS on ultra performance mode, and we're getting around 135 FPS on average. 
Next in line is the Palette Gaming Pro RTX 2060 Super. We're getting to the point now where our performance tier is high enough that I don't think low settings are really necessary or justifiable anymore, so uh, from here on out I'm going to stick with the optimized settings. So for this one I've got a plus 105 megahertz on the core and plus 700 megahertz on the memory. And the top left is with DLSS off and we're averaging around 115 uh, frames per second. And on the top right we've got DLSS quality at around 135 FPS average. Bottom left is DLSS balance with around 140 FPS average. And the bottom right is DLSS performance with around 150 FPS average. Next we have the EVGA XC RTX 3060 Ti. Uh, I've got a 105 megahertz core offset and 1000 megahertz memory offset. And in the top left we've got DLSS off at around 150 FPS average. Top right is DLSS quality with around 160 FPS average. Bottom left is DLSS balanced with around 170 FPS average. And bottom right is DLSS performance with also around 170 FPS. Um, so this is the first time where we're seeing um, a bit of a wall get hit there uh, where it's not actually scaling anymore uh, after a certain point. So it looks like uh, beyond balanced, we're just too CPU limited beyond that point to really see a whole lot of performance uh, with higher levels of DLSS. And rounding out our test line up here today is the EVGA XC3 Ultra RTX 3070. And for this one I have a 105 megahertz core offset and 1100 megahertz memory offset. And uh, we only have two comparisons here. Uh, on the left is DLSS off with around 165 FPS average. And on the right we have DLSS quality with also around the same 165 FPS average. So I didn't bother showing any other DLSS modes because it's pretty clear here, uh, even with just quality mode, that uh, the bottleneck is elsewhere. Um, so it might look like, if you just look at the left hand side there, the utilization of the GPU, that you're being maxed out. Um, however, one thing that might give it away a little bit here is the power consumption. Uh, this is a 270 watt card and it's not using anywhere near that. So it looks like it does still have a little bit more performance to give, but uh, it is bottlenecked elsewhere. Okay, so a bit of a bonus test here. Uh, we're still testing the same EVGA XC3 Ultra RTX 3070 as we did in the previous segment. And I went ahead and put the clip that was on the right in the previous segment on the left this time. So it's still the DLSS quality, uh, which we already know gets an average of around 165 FPS. And I'm just using that so you can clearly see that the GPU is not where the bottleneck is. And then on the right, I'm still using DLSS quality, but I've increased the RAM speed from 3200 MHz to 3733 MHz. And I've tightened the cast latency down from 16 to 14. And now we're getting around 190 FPS difference there, so about a 25 FPS increase on average uh, just by increasing the RAM speed. And last but not least, just to establish a performance ceiling, if you will, uh, we have the 3090. Uh, I guess got the Founders Edition, but uh, right now I'm working with a core offset of 120 megahertz and a memory offset of 1,250 megahertz. And as you can see here, we're clearly uh, not GPU bound in this scenario, um, regardless of whether DLSS is off or on. Uh, I've got DLSS off on the left and DLSS quality on the right, but the FPS is pretty much exactly the same at around 205 FPS average. Um, so yeah, it's definitely overkill for 1080p gaming. So what did we learn? Well, the 2060 Super, maybe the 2060 seems to be around where you start to really see the benefits of playing on PC instead of on console, and any lower than that, and you're probably not going to be able to hit the 120 FPS that you can get on a PS5 or a Series X, assuming you've got the right monitor and connection and all that. Um, and of course it depends on what's most important to you, because there are still some advantages on PC that you don't get on console, like your FOB slider and that sort of thing. 
And then the 3060 Ti slash 3070 performance tier, that seems to be around when you're no longer gonna be GPU bottlenecked at 1080p. Um, so depending on what you're running for a CPU, um, perhaps all you need to do is uh, get faster memory or at least tune what you already have, maybe see if you can overclock it a little bit. Um, but yeah, memory does make a much bigger difference than a lot of people seem to think it does. And um, also, of course, if your CPU is a little bit lacking, then that might be where you're at as well. It really depends on, on what you're running. In this particular setup, the way I was running it, um, you're unlikely really to see much more than 205, 210 FPS average, even with uh, like a 3090 or even a 3080 Ti, something like that. Uh, at 1080p, it's just overkill, and you're pretty much always going to be CPU bound, uh, even if you don't turn on DLSS. So to summarize, basically you're looking at pretty significant diminishing returns, anything beyond like 3060 Ti or 3070, or realistically any RTX 3000 graphics card, if you're willing to put up with uh, some higher DLSS settings, you can pretty much get to the same spot, and even if you only have an RTX 2000 series, it's probably still going to be a pretty solid experience and potentially quite a bit better than on console. And if you do have a powerful enough uh, GPU and CPU, like an RTX 3000 series and 5950X or a 10850K or up on the Intel side of things, got both of those working together, then there's a really good chance that your RAM speed and latency is going to be where your bottleneck is. So you should definitely look into tuning that up as much as you can. And you're only really going to benefit from higher end GPUs like 3090 uh, if you're playing at higher resolutions like a 1440p or 4K. Um, and realistically, in my opinion anyway, 1080p is the better way to play if you're at all competitive. Just because, you know, if you can play on a small, fast monitor like a 24 inch uh, at 240 or 360 hertz, then you're going to have the fastest response time possible and you can get away with a little bit lower end of a GPU. So it's a win-win. And uh, another fun fact there about uh, anyone who tries to say that 1080p is just too low resolution, it's just too blurry, you can't see anything. The pixel density for a 1080p display at a 24 inch size is 91.79 pixels per inch. And a pixel density for a 1440p display at 32 inches is also 91.79 pixels per inch. So it's the same either way, if they're playing on 32 inch, then they have nothing to stand on when trying to say that 1080p is not good enough. Um, obviously you get a slight advantage, uh, 1440p at 27 inch, but I prefer 24 inch anyway personally. It's just, you get everything closer together, it's just easier to, to see everything that you need to see at once, and you get the fastest response times, and in my, in my experience, the best possible uh, setup that you can get. Alright, well that pretty much does it for this one. If you enjoyed this video and you found it informative, be sure to drop a like on your way out, subscribe for more content just like this, and I'll let the rest of the video play out there just because it's a pretty interesting game. I just got on there to have some background footage and it ended up uh, being not what I expected. So enjoy the rest of the footage and hope to see you on the next one. Be active. Counting 
target identified. Have a little fun, yeah? Enemy UAV active. Don't get comfortable. The bounty target is down. Marvelous. Moving in. Enemy team is tracking your position. is closing in. Relocating the safe zone. Gas is right on your tail. Enemy precision airstrike. Stay alert. 